Hello and welcome back to Operations with Void. I'm your host, Forgotten Void, and this week we will be showcasing one of my less liked ships, uh, the Cuniberti. Um, so, on the tech tree, the Tarigo and the Cuniberti are almost the same. So anything you can do in the Cuniberti, you can do in the Tarigo, because they're the Kunuberti is barely an upgrade from the trio. In fact, it's almost exactly the same. The only difference is you have access to 12 kilometer torps for a 20 second longer reload. And that is why I don't use them because it, you get two kilometers of range for 20 seconds re reload longer. And since they already hit for what, 10K? Yeah, they already barely hit any damage. Uh, we want to keep the DPM up, and so that is why we are sticking with the 10 kilometer torpedoes, even though, as you see, I have plenty of XP to grab those. I'm just not even going to bother. I'm going to go straight to the tier 9. I recommend other people do the same thing. The torpedoes aren't worth it. Now, if you're running r rand, well, even random, it's kind of hard to justify that the extra 2 kilometers. So, yeah, that's why uh, we are running those for the, the 72nd reload. We do have the uh, upgraded main battery gun range because, uh, well, it's barely an upgrade. It's, it's, the range is terrible. And the modules, it's uh, concealment, it's uh, acceleration, uh, torpedoes, engine protection, and main armaments uh, there's really no other way this is your standard torpedo build uh, most um or most destroyers should run this anyways uh, with the exception of the gunboat mains uh as for captain skills we are running the basic the basic destroyer skills that's it honestly it's actually pretty bad because you want to run a whole bunch of skills with the uh, uh, the Italian ships. Uh, more range, better reload, better reload. Oh wait, we're out of skills. That's all. That's AP damage. Doesn't even help us. I mean, you want this, you want this, you want this, you want this, you want this. Just to make it even, like, usable as a destroyer. Yes, this is probably better f so you can use your guns more. But even then, it just feels so bad as a destroyer. Almost like all of them were running a specific captain at 21 points that... You know, has a way to, um, well, with Confederate, you can't do that in, uh, in ops, but you can do that in, um, in, uh, randoms. So there's the, uh, reload reason for the slow reload on a gunboat. Uh, the firing range being so low because as soon as you get a single kill, you suddenly have 8% firing range, which makes it a little bit better. And then having a low number of consumables or a low action time of consumables at like 30, 25 seconds. I mean, there's an extra 10% just by uh, with that. So, yeah, it's almost like everybody who tested these ships played uh, Luigi in these ships. Because why not when you're running a test ship? Well, obviously now... It, uh, I mean, it may not be obvious, but now testers cannot use any captain. They are forced to use rental captains. And I'm pretty sure it was because of this line that they were forced to use uh, rental captains. But anyways, enough uh, ranting about that. Uh, we'll just go ahead and sh showcase this ship in uh, the Ultimate Frontier. That, let's head into battle. So, 
So as you see here, uh, I am divved up with Som. He was gracious enough to spend his time playing Stellaris until I got home from work and then uh, div up with me for some uh, games. Because he's on east coast of the US, well Canada time. He's, he's in Canada, I'm in Japan, and so time zones, it's... Uh, they're a pain. Anyways, so um, he brought out his um, 40k collab version of the mines, and I'm just bringing up the Kuniberti because, as you saw, I still need to grind this ship because I only play it once every few days <laughs> because I don't like it. Uh, and with and I ground out the uh, tier seven hoping for something better, and then got to the tier eight. I'm like, wait, what's what's different? This is the ship I just finished grinding. And so I, I kind of stopped grinding at the tier 8. I hear the higher tier ones are better, but I haven't tried. So anyways, we, we kind of stopped here waiting for the destroyers so we can get a couple salvos off before we speed up into cover to dodge some shells and then make them uh, hit the island. They get to change focus. We go dark for a second. Oh wait, they're in get our uh, range. They are smoking up though, so. But as soon as they're out of smoke, they uh, start targeting us because we're in uh, visible range. Problema risolto, signore. There we go. They smoked up again. So we're trying to speed juke them, and it is reducing our damage. But, like, as you saw, we took some damage. That's because we are the closest, and uh, bots just target whatever's closest. And uh, my teammate saw him. He would have stayed down here like this tall one is. But he saw the two battleships going south, so he's being a good boy and he's going up to take care of the cruisers. Because the battleships, you know, that's kind of why they're up there. They're supposed to go up and take care of the cruisers, but they aren't. And they often don't. And so you kind of have to rely on someone to go up there when the battleships just want to come down and farm the battleships. Now another thing is you actually see the Amagi where he's going. He's going to farm the uh, the Raptor. I believe that's the Amagi. Well, we have one battleship going to farm the Raptor while two are, are focusing on the battleships. We are getting a position to one, not spawn the Clemson. We're staying on the right side of the islands down to the south and the island that the little island right in front of my ship, you'll see the line on the minimap goes to it, that if you stay on the right side of the island, then Clemson won't spawn. Oh wait, Clemson already spawned. I guess we could have gone closer. But I also like staying out of range. And also right here, I'm kind of using the smoke. You don't have to be in smoke to uh, get the benefit of smoke. You can sit behind smoke. That's what a lot of people don't realize about Aegis is you can sit behind this one. Also, by occasionally firing, these battle the battleships are programmed to sh shoot high explosive at destroyers. They will swap to high explosive to shoot at uh, destroyers. And so by doing that, I can uh, take the heat off of the cruisers behind me because they'll swap to high explosive, but as soon as I go undetected, they swap back to armor piercing. And so by doing this, you can actually get it so that the battleships don't shoot at all. Now, of course, you're, if you continuously shoot, of course, they're going to shoot at you, but this is just a way of being able to take their targeting and it it's kind of exploiting their targeting so that they don't shoot at you. I mean, if a player did that, a lot of players usually just shoot whatever's in the gun. 
And sometimes the battleships will do that, but usually they want to swap to high explosive first before they shoot you. And so with the New York at the low health, I'm just going to continue gunning because I know instead of in this time, instead of uh, going dark the normal way, I can use my smoke screen. So I haven't used my any of my smoke screens at all. And you actually kind of want superintendent because for the smokes, because you run out of the smokes very quickly. Here I'm not using the smoke screen yet because I see the direction the guns, the Wyoming's are pointed, and they're not pointed at me just yet. Once they start getting close to being pointed at me, I might, uh, I will use the smoke screen. But until then, yeah, see the the front guns almost were on me, and so I went ahead and smoked up. And so now I'm swapping to honor piercing. And as you see, I'm pointing a little bit to the left of the line, and because that's because I know Wyoming is uh, turning. And I'm trying to get it before it turns. But with everybody focusing on it, since it's the only thing everybody can see, it's probably not going to even last until my torpedoes hit. So, like there, there it goes. Now, here is where normally the cruisers would spawn. Since we've taken care of the northern cruisers, we've taken care of the battleships, the cruisers in the center will spawn, right? Right? In this case, no. And that is because we've already engaged, spotted, engaged, and triggered uh, raptors. Um, well, raptors voice line and uh, the escorting ships over there. And so I was talking to my uh, friend about this. And he was talking about how they have, with some others, speed run Nurai. Um, tough, not Nurai, tough. I've been with them when they speed run Nurai. But tough, you can actually speed run. Because if all the enemy ships, if ra all the enemy ships are destroyed before the uh, planes start coming in, then so raptors destroyed and then the um the th three the all the cruisers and the battleships are destroyed before the omaha's spawn in then the the op just immediately ends in a victory now you'll it'll be a three star victory because you'll be missing the targets and you'll be missing uh, destroy whiskey so the targets, each wave has a target and whiskey. There's just, so it'll be a three-star victory, but it'll be like a five-minute three-star victory. It's probably a bug. It's maybe definitely a bug. But if you really want to speed run ops, tough would actually be the way to speed run because you actually get uh, more XP per time in tough than any of your other ops if you do it that way. You get co-op time with uh, like double co-op uh, XP for everybody granted it's still not as good as I usually get in ops but it's for the time it takes it's the best one Ouija please fix this so that I don't have to talk about this again so after realizing and talking about this I'm knowing that the uh, Omaha's that I was waiting for aren't going to spawn. We're gonna just going to go ahead and uh, head towards this raptor, maybe cut it off. Warship commanders, transport aircraft have arrived. Proceed to evacuation. Protect the aerodrome until embarkation is finished and the transport aircraft... And noticing the... the uh, Aerodrome coming in. I know to know that they're now going to be south spawn, so I'm going to move in position for there.
I see the Pensacola as a target, and so that means the Pensacola is probably going to die to the aerodromes. Highly likely to die, because Pensacola has enough armor to arm the bombs. Here, I'm just checking the times. So you have 25 seconds of each. Uh, so because of that, Pensacola usually dies to the aerodrome. So I, I usually don't have to worry about that. In this case, I'm going to be focusing on the Omaha. So now that I'm in range to be spotted, I'm going to go ahead and uh, activate both of my consumables as I shoot at the Omaha. And we're going for a run on the Pensacola. This is the gimmick that the Italian ships have, where they have the full speed, high speed smoke, and you can just go up and run up to get within two kilometers of a ship and torque them. As you see, it takes five torpedoes to get a high HP buffed Pensacola, leaving us at, you know, any other destroyer, yeah, you can get it. Uh, you could destroy battleships by loading, unloading all your torps, or maybe even one rack of torps. But this one, yeah, you you can only get cruisers. So we're running away. We're not shooting because well, we wanted to go dark. Omaha has amazing, really scary uh, HE DPM. So we didn't want to be in its DPM range. The other ones, yeah, we're okay without. Hey, Pensacola, you know, every 15 seconds you have to worry about its guns, not every four or five, or however much um, the Omaha's reload is. So now we're going into position, we're going to try to, I was thinking about going for the second wave, there's also Whiskey. So we're going to go ahead and go for the second wave. If Whiskey spawns, we'll, uh, we'll just run away, otherwise uh, we'll be hammering the second wave when they spawn in. This is why I wish that you know, I had a shorter cooldown on the... the the cooldown for the speed is twice as long as the smoke. and But you get twice as many uh, speed boosts as you d get smoke. Who designed this? Yeah, so we're, we're just going in. I see Whiskey is over there. Uh, so, because whiskey's on the far end, I'm not even going to bother with it. I'm going to go straight for uh, throwing torpedoes at the ships. Now, the reason why I'm not bothering with whiskey is because my div mate, Som, is over there. All of the enemies are over there. So, I don't have to really worry about the, uh, Our repair base is no longer in danger. Whiskey being uh, an issue. So I'm trying to stay out of Omaha range. And Cleveland range. Sovralimentazione attivata. Abbiamo distrutto un incrocio And there's a couple torpedoes. There we go. There's no more Omaha. But now we're in Cleveland radar range. So we might as well sh open up because we are being actively detected. And so we're trying to uh, use our speed to speed shoot the Cleveland shells. As you can see, it's somewhat working. It doesn't work as well with North Carolina because they, uh, they go everywhere. In fact, uh, if we stay on a uh, straight and steady course, we're more likely to uh, uh, yeah, we're more likely to miss or not get hit by North Carolina. 
secondaries because they're so inaccurate. But as we're speed juking, we actually get into the shell's path. It was mostly Cleveland though, because Cleveland would obviously do a lot more damage than a North Carolina secondaries. Okay, Cleveland's down. See these torps? How are the torps? Oh, we might get one or two. Yep, we got two because North Carolina sped up. They were on the uh, aft end, so it wasn't terrible because uh, that at least the first one was full damage or mostly full damage because there's not any torpedo protection there. But as you can see now, the uh, rear end looks very damage saturated. So the second torpedo wasn't as much. And we are now out of gun range. The other way to go dark is to run out of gun range. And North Carolina is dead. So now we're moving on to uh, the third wave. And with uh, with the ultimate frontier, the first wave determines that this sec second and third wave will not be there. The se uh, second wave determines that the third wave will be in the direction that the first and second wave were not. So unlike defensive naval frontier, where you can have two middle waves in the ultimate frontier you cannot have two waves in the same uh, zone they will always be in a different zone i still do not know what uh for uh whiskey if there is a telltale for which side whiskey will spawn on or if it's just random at the current moment i am just assuming that it is random unless there are any key factors that state otherwise but with how many different variations of well you already have three first waves and then another two f uh second waves so for between first and second wave you already have six different variations you would need to play tough over and over and over to find a pattern between the two and considering you can't select and choose an op to play over and over and over again and I don't think I have people who would want to play tough 18 times in a row then uh, it's kind of hard to find uh, what triggers what like if back when you could select and choose an op if tough didn't uh, have reduced uh, or choosing op didn't have reduced rewards maybe people would be okay playing the same op over and over and over in a row but by having a uh, what's that a 20% reduction in rewards just for choosing an op nobody uh, like the, most people didn't want to choose an op, or the people who did were just like, why is it so low? For me, the only time we chose an op was to test uh, theories, and that's how we calculated uh, the base XP per star, is by running Narai. Oh, Wichita. Supposed to be on the other side of Missouri. Look at all those torpedoes for Missouri. All those torpedoes not hitting Missouri. Oh, we got one. But it doesn't matter. We won anyways. There's another thing. With the recent patches, they've been going north of the island. And that's another weird part with the recent patches. They're supposed to go south of the island. Anyways, 234k damage with 5 kills gets us second place. Of course, mine's in the hands of a good player is first place. But... We beat out a, several good ships. You have 220 gun hits, so this is with 18 torpedoes. Obviously, a 
cross. But yeah, no, Tallinn should have been higher. Alabama should have went higher. Oh, I guess it, not really. Tallinn definitely should have been higher. But see, our damage is actually uh, pretty f split, pretty 50-50. 100k in by main battery and 120k with torpedoes. Even with 10k per torpedoes and missing a bunch, we still got 123k, 124k damage with our torpedoes. A little bit more considering we have 4k in flooding damage. Only a little bit of high explosive Sap is usually the way to go, especially if things are broadside. High explosive is only for bow on targets, and even then, it's meh because it doesn't pen very well. And uh, we were using blue XP, so that's why we have 21,000 uh, base XP. Well, not base XP, but 21,000 XP for our 1300 base XP. So that's uh, uh, Kunibar team. Pretty bad ship. Can be played well. Can do well. But all in all, a pretty bad ship. Like, there I had 234k. If I was in any other destroyer, I would have been at 300k plus. Any other, even a Fubuki. Tier 6 Fubuki. I'd be at 300k plus. So, if anybody wants me to play a ship, I, this should show that I'm willing to play bad ships, uh, if I have them. And I, one of the other for uh, tough, you can look through the playlist here, it is for uh, Deedle, another really bad ship for ops. So with that... Give this, ship, uh, this, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't like it. If you want to see, well, if you want to see more videos, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Or don't, can't tell you what to do because I'm not your mother. But I do hope to see you again next week. Have a good one.